Dummy Gospodo! How you doing, folks? Charles here, laying down, trying to recover. It's been a rough week. We went from Osiak to Zagreb to waking up at 7 in the morning yesterday, driving all the way back here to Novi Sad. I just threw my things away. I had to run and get on the bus and head to Zrenjanin for Sveti Jovan Slava at the beautiful, wonderful Sturban family from Zrenjanin, and some of the nicest, greatest people. They put on such a spectacular Slava. Uh, they had their own little keg of Yellen. Uh, we had delicious food, meat, sarma. Uh, we had live music. Man, it was so neat. You know, it was me and this other American there. Uh, so Joe Conway, this uh, my manager from um, Nantucket, Massachusetts. He's, he's over here for three months. You know, he liked it so much last year. I brought him over here to hire some of my students. He came here for a week and a half, loved it so much. He came here for three months now. You know, he's going to be, be here until March. Uh, but anyway, I want to tell you a funny story because um, I think this story is so funny. And, and you Serbians will get a kick out of it probably. Probably everybody that watches will think it's funny. Uh, or I thought it was funny anyway. Maybe you don't. If you don't, fuck you, okay? Uh, anyway, the story goes like this. I had to find an apartment uh, because I had to stay in Zrenjanin and because the Slava, I, after Slava, I'm in no position to even walk, let alone try to find my way back here to Novi Sad when I go to Zrenjanin. <laughs> so look on Airbnb and booking.com, okay? Airbnb. Check the site, www.airbnb.com. Great site. You know, a lot of Serbians told me they hadn't heard about it. But it's a site, rather than renting a hotel room, you can rent a ha an apartment or something off of a, a homeowner in Serbia or wherever you want to travel. Any city. Every city almost has some Airbnbs. Even um, Somaliland had it when I was in Somaliland. But anyway, I found one. I, I always get my own room because I don't... Uh, on Airbnb, you can stay in one room in somebody's house, but I don't do that. You know, I always stay in, I rent the whole place. I'm not saying, ah, just never mind. I always do it because I, I like privacy, you know? Uh, anyway, this is a guy in Zrenjanin. and it's Lux. Uh, like, it's like a hotel, but there's six rooms in it, you know, and you have your own bed, your own bathroom. I mean, it's really nice. It's like a little suite, you know, in six of them in this place. But I was in there. I get there. The, the guy didn't speak English very well. He was probably about, oh yeah, he told me how old he was. He was 47, I believe. A few, a lot older than me. Uh, anyway, I was telling some of the people I know, like the Dolovats family, the Shachich family, the Shirvan family, all that, and he knew some of them. Uh, but he was um, a big Chetnik, okay? His family were Chetniks. He just, me and him sat there. His English was bad, but he was talking in Serbian. I understand a little bit of Serbian, you know. Of course, just like every other Serbian, when you come in there, we're sitting out in the lobby. There's like six chairs out there, you know. Nice. He had some Ser Serbian music and everything playing. And he says, uh, do you want some Rocky? I said, Pa da, gospodine, molim vas. Gimme, 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 okay? He had, pulls out this bottle of Dunja Rakia. Really good stuff, okay? Pours me one, throw it back. It was really nice. He instantly fills it up like they always do. You know what? I'm getting ready to go to a slob. I hadn't eaten or anything. So we start talking. Then all of a sudden, a Bulgarian guy comes out and sits down. And then this Romanian, actually two Romanians, and this Roma uh, three Romanians, two Romanian guys and a Romanian girl. So we had three Romanians, a Bulgarian, a Serbian, and me. And he, they're, they're talking some amongst themselves. And I, I'm sorry, let me back up just a bit. After we was drinking the Rocky, he was telling me the story of his family. You know, I, I, he was a little odd with me being American, I could tell, you know. He brought up the bombing and, and, and things. I mean, not in a rude way, but just brought up things that happened here. And he was telling me about his family. He said his family were Chetniks from way, way back. They had a lot of money. Tito came in and threw his grandfather in prison, or his great-grandfather, I think it was. And he died in prison. They stole, took all of his land because the guy had a lot of things. And he hated Tito. He was just telling me this. 
and how his, his uh, other family ran off to the United States during Tito's reign here because they were Chetniks. And if you don't know what a Chetnik is, it's the people who supported the king. Uh, and the partisans were the communists that backed Joseph, Joseph Tito. Uh, anyhow, he was just telling me how he was this big Chetnik and he hated Tito and how his family, one of them died and they stole all their stuff and they can't get it back and all this mess. Then these two Romanians and this Bulgarian, they, they, they came out there and were sitting, trying to communicate. One of the Romanians spoke Serbian, and the, the Bulgarian, of course, he could understand a little bit. So the guy, the Serbian guy, being the nice guy that he is, I, I was in the midst of telling him about Madeleine Albright, how she's such a cunt and a dirty woman and uh, Wesley Clark and all that stuff, you know. And then they sit down and uh, the Serbian pours him drinks. And so one of the Romanian guys... He did not hear us, believe this or not, because he wasn't in there. But he says, uh, he, it's the one that didn't speak Serbian. And he said, uh, cheers to Tito in Yugoslavia. <laughs> cheers to Tito in Yugoslavia. Oh, man. I'm like, oh. <laughs> And the guy goes, no. He said, no like Tito. <laughs> Oh, man, I thought it was so funny. It, it, it couldn't have been worse timing. He was just going through this whole spiel about how much he hated Tito, and then all of a sudden there's Romanian. Cheers to Tito. And then they got into this uh, talk about Slobodan Milosevic and uh, Ceausescu uh, and all that stuff. But I just thought that story was funny. Maybe I made it long, and maybe it wasn't funny to you because you weren't there. But... The guy had so much emotion and passion and, and hatred towards Tito. And then all, not three minutes later, these people just sit in. Cheers to Tito in Yugoslavia. Tito in Yugoslavia. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. But anyway, I'm back here in Novi Sad, chilling out, man. It's been a rough, rough couple days. Woke up early this morning feeling like absolute crap. <laughs> Because Reni and I know so many people had just left this place. After the Tito thing, the guy poured us another drink. I had like three shots there. Then I was walking out and I bumped into a couple guys I knew in Zreni. Because I know everybody almost in that city. And I had a couple drinks with them guys. And then, oh my God, I get to the Slava. And oof, it, was, it was fun. Serbians have so much culture. Such culture, awesome, beautiful, fantastic people. Uh, love them dearly. <laughs> And anyway, I'm here for a couple days, and then I'm leaving for Greece. I mean, I've been... 2018 has started on a hectic way, my friends. But anyway, that's it for me. Just thought I'd tell you that funny Tito story. <laughs> so when you come to this country, there's a lot of people that like Tito <coughs> and that liked what Tito did. And there's a lot of people that don't. So don't just automatically assume and do a cheers to Milosevic, to Tito, to Stalin or anybody like that, okay? Just keep that to yourself. That's it, my friends. Dovi Genia.